Back in 2020, I started putting serious thought into how I wanted my office to look, sort of reorganize the collections that I had, reduce some of the figures, put those into storage, and emphasize the ones that I really liked. And one of the ideas that I had, and this came from the uh, Bobby's Skullface diorama series of videos, is he's doing dioramas. And as far as I got was setting up some shelves with scenes, poses, and I think the only one that I still have, and this is going to come down soon, is Transformers. So I'll throw a picture of that in here. But um, after playing around with that for a while, I realized that doing dioramas takes up a lot of real estate and it sort of minimizes the amount of figures that you can put into a space. And the idea that I eventually had was doing movable art, by which I meant something like this. So using a shadow box with a backdrop, some effect pieces. In this case, I've got some fake plants here, but um, this is the idea that I had and it wasn't until recently that I actually went for it and tried to make this happen. So I'm going to break this down for you and uh, walk through what all is happening here. From the beginning, I always planned to use a Predator figure. Now this is figure arts. I had originally planned to use NECA's. I had done a minor repaint of this, but you can see they are, there's a noticeable size difference. So recently I decided to use this guy who's been sitting on my desk um, pretty much by himself for a couple of years. And um, this helped me find an appropriately sized shadow box. When I first had this idea, I was looking for a shadow box and again I was looking for one that was going to fit a NECA and I was having a lot of difficulty. I think shadow boxes in general, um, they don't have the greatest variety of sizes. They, a lot of them are one inch deep, this one is two inches deep, but a lot of them are one and I was looking for something deeper that I could fit an action figure into. I got this one in Joanne Fabric. I don't, the, the packaging is long gone, but I don't think there was a name brand on here. Um, crucially, it was two inches deep. There was, I was also at Michael's. Michael had one that was eight by eight that was two inches deep. And I thought if I was doing a, a larger scene, that might work if you had multiple predators that you, you wanted to fit together. Um, that could work really well, but I wanted one shadow box for one figure. And uh, I, I picked this up. The jungle background is actually from NECA's packaging. So it's the background that came with this, which I saved. I don't know why. I usually throw out the packaging immediately, but I, again, it's, it's sort of that hoarding tendency. I thought it might be useful someday, so I kept it. And uh, I knew that I had it and I knew like I said, the, the original idea was always to use a predator figure for this initial shadow box. And I knew that I had that packaging. I thought I could get a frame, I could get some fake plants, and I could make a jungle scene. During the long Thanksgiving holiday weekend is when I put this into action. So I think it was that Sunday. And I didn't film any of it at the time because I was sort of in a rush. I wanted to see if I could get this done. And I, I did the whole thing in a day. So that includes the shopping, the gluing, which uh, I'm still gonna take this apart in a minute. But uh, I did all this in a day. It's it's not that complicated. And um, I just wanted to, to get through it. And I knew that if I was filming that everything was gonna take longer and I didn't know if any of it was gonna work. So uh, Dan requested that I do a video and uh, I'm doing that now, so. So the first thing that I needed to do was get the glass out of the shadow box. Inside of the box, there was originally some extra wood that was on each surface holding the glass pane in place. So the first thing I did was pry, pry all of these out so that I could then remove the glass. After that, it was a lot of cutting. So I cut the, the background insert 
to a size. This is just glued onto the background and then I cut each of these sides as well. Again, to the size of the shadow box and I glued those in. And then also from Joanne Fabric, I got some fake plants. So I got just two. One is like this and the other one is like this. They come in a huge variety. Uh, these were both pretty cheap. I thought they looked um, suitable, I guess. I mean, you, you look at the, if you look at the background itself, there's, there's sort of big leaves here and uh, some, some more big leaves, some small leaves. So I just thought that those two plants looked jungle-ish. I don't know what they actually are. I don't know that much about plants, but I thought this could be a vine, this could be, you know, something coming up from the ground. So I had something going in multiple directions and you fit the figure into that and you have a cool 3D effect. The whole, the whole intention of this was to, to do movable art. So once I had this, I could then move him wherever I wanted. It still takes up some real estate, but combined, it makes for a nice art piece. How I glued these in, and it is glue, is little bits of foam here and here. And this foam, I didn't even have to buy anything special. This foam was actually attached to the front of this. So this was part of the shadow box and then you tack or pin whatever you want onto this. But uh, I could have done more. I thought about adding additional plants. Like initially I was gonna have a bunch. It was gonna be like a sort of drapes of plants coming down and um, I might still add some more, but again, I was in a hurry that day. So I put one coming down, one going up and it it works. Um, I like it. I, like I said, I might still do more just to give it an additional 3D effect, but uh, I don't know, I like it. I don't know how many of these I'm ultimately gonna wind up doing. I do want to give him a companion piece. This guy was recently on sale at Big Bad Toy Store, so I did grab him as well. I, for him, I would like to do a hive background, but um, as far as this goes, I like it. I think it was a success. The few people that have seen pictures of this, I've sent a few people pictures of this and they seem to like it. So I think as far as execution on my idea, I think it's worked out pretty well. And uh, I have him sitting opposite where I work most days. So uh, whenever I look up, I see him on the shelf over there and it makes me happy. Better than if he were just sitting, I used to have him sitting closer and he was, you know, in with a cluster of other stuff that he, he'd sometimes get lost. So I think this brings a focus to it that I, I really like. I hope you found this interesting. It's certainly not our usual customizing or review videos, but if I do another one of these, I might document the process as I go. For the hive, I think, well, for Predator, I used the, the NECA background packaging. And for Alien, I think the NECA background packaging for Alien is just an egg, which is not what I want. So I'm gonna have to probably do a custom piece. Um, I'll just find a picture of an alien hive and then crop that and size it to the, the shadow box. So I have something as soon as I print it, that's, that's the right size. Again, hopefully you found this interesting. If you do, if you have any comments, if you have anything to add, please drop a comment below. Um, thanks for watching. Thank you.